start thinking about the material in these readings, which we're going to discuss and do some activities on tonight, actually I would argue, this is my point, where, where I'm going with this, that this stuff is actually more important in a country like Thailand than it might be in Canada or America. Because you know what? Now, people in Canada, some people won't say how they feel. It's true. There's people that bear their feelings in Canada, just like any other country. But very often, if I did something like that to a young lady in Canada, and went through and said, it'll be fine, you shouldn't be feeling that, invalidating her feelings, you shouldn't be feeling it, she feels it. She can't stop it, right? And then saying, it's not that way. How do I know how it is to her? How do I know it's not that way? How can I say that, right? But I say all those things and tear apart her emotions. But typically in Canada, the reaction you're going to get is something like, go stick it in your ear. That's what. It might be worse. <laughs> you don't know what I'm feeling. You don't understand. How can you say that? You don't understand where I'm coming from. Now, you need to sit and listen to me. People will say that, but you don't want say that. So you have to be more alert and more aware because the signals you'll get are very, very minor. You know who's been a great person for teaching me? That's my wife, to be honest with you. Because there's a time when early in our marriage, I, I, I mean, I love my wife dearly, but I have to be honest, the first two years of my marriage, of our marriage, were absolute hell. And mostly it was my fault because I couldn't understand how to read her. She would say, you know, she'd say, by the way. So I would do it. <laughs> I would just go and do it. Because she said, my goodbye. But the way she said it was, my goodbye. And it was like, you are being an insensitive jerk. If you take that action, it shows that you don't even love me or care for me. But I heard my goodbye, so I went ahead and did it. And then she's angry. And, he's like, and then she's like, you know, not talking to me for two days. And I'm like, what did I do? And she's like, my goodbye. And, and finally, I had to learn some things, and she did too. We met halfway. You know, I told her, I said, look, I'm from Canada. You know, I grew up in England, and I was brought up in Canada. I'm sorry, I was born in England. I moved to Canada when I was five years old. So I've lived in Canada most of my life. In the last 10 years, I've been living internationally, but mostly my background knowledge comes from my culture. And I said, you know, you have to tell me. If I'm being a jerk, you can look at me and say, you're being a jerk. And I'm okay with that. I might not agree with you, I might get frustrated, but better for you to tell me. But the other, but it was two, two things. I had to learn to listen to her, not only with my ears, <laughs> but with my eyes, and with my heart, <laughs> and with my feelings in my body. And now, sometimes I walk in the house, she hasn't said anything, I haven't said anything, but I can go up to her like this and I can say, maybe there's something wrong. And she'll say, no, I'm not. <laughs> and I'll say, okay. and I'll say, no, I don't say it's okay. No, I don't do that anymore. I used to do that. I used to do all of those things. But I'm getting better. Now I say to her, I say, no. I say, maybe I know there's something wrong. And I said, I'd like you to tell me about it. Now sometimes she's like, no, I won't tell you. And I'm like, that's okay. But just know that when you're ready to tell me, you can tell me. And usually half an hour later, an hour later, sometimes just before we go to bed, she'll say, this is what's wrong. And, she'll tell me. and sometimes it's about me. Very often it's not. Very often I have nothing to do with me. It has to do with a problem with another, you know, when she was studying, a student, maybe a professor. She's upset with, with maybe a man was inappropriate with her or hitting on her and she told him she was married. I don't know. But it often doesn't involve me, sometimes it does. But I've learned to sort of be the sensitivity. And that's what these two articles are really about, more than anything else, right? And you, the other thing is, here's, here's the other interesting thing, is that if you do these things, you think you're being affected. Most of the time, this is not affected, okay? Almost every one of them comes back to this. Okay, if you think about it, if I, if you, let's go back to take the other person's sign. Now, to be honest with you, I gave you the Jackie example. 
The chances are that Jackie is at least half right, maybe all right. And I might be half wrong, I might be all wrong. That's not the point. The point is the emotional place I'm in when I'm angry is I'm not ready to hear that the other person's right and I'm wrong. I'm not ready to hear that. When somebody's mad, you gotta understand their feelings. When they're hurt, when they're upset, you gotta understand their feelings first. When they're frustrated, you have to get step into their shoes and understand their feelings. And you know what, if you do that, later, when they've calmed down, you might be able to say, you know, you can look at this differently. And maybe Jackie didn't mean to do that. And the person can think about it then and say, you know what, you're probably right, and look at it differently. But not when they're mad. Does that make sense? It's like being in a swamp, you know, and you're going down, you're going down, you know, you don't want to know what's for dinner. You want to know how you're going to get a, a life rope to get out of the swamp. That's what those emotions are like. They're washing over you. They're out of control. Right? Okay? So, when you do these things, every, all, every one of these things invalidates. It's not. Invalidates. You shouldn't. Invalidates. It'll be fine. Invalidates. Okay? I have, both of my sons are great teachers for me too. Four and five year olds. The little kids are wonderful because they haven't been taught yet how to hide their feelings. And so they're right there and they'll just let you know how they're feeling. And you know, we, we, we kill feelings in little kids and it's terrible because we tell little kids, don't mic and ride, don't feel that way. And we have our own equivalent of mic and ride. We just say, you know, well just, you know, be tough. You can't, you know, say mic and ride, be tough if you're a boy. Okay? Boys shouldn't try. Okay, that's, that's typically the boys are suppressed, their emotions are suppressed in the West, right? In, in, uh, in some other countries, it's, it's different, right? For me? Eastern culture is the same. Or yeah, it's suppressed, suppressed yeah. the male, the male expression of emotion. So what you do is, and this is interesting, I'll tell you how much of a difference it makes. It's a true story, okay? This has happened dozens of times with both of my boys, both David and Derek. The same thing, over and over again. Typically, let's say I'll make up a scenario. David has a toy that he wants. His mom tells him he can't have it for some reason. Maybe it, it, it's, it's somebody else's toy or they have to give it back to someone else. So she has to take the toy from either David or Derek. It doesn't matter. They're interchangeable in this case. Could be either one of the boys. We'll say, we'll say Derek. So she takes the toy from Derek. Derek becomes very angry. And Derek has trouble controlling his emotions. So he starts going, yeah! Passion for Now, she says, somebody will say to him, don't be like that. Don't, don't cry. Don't be a silly boy. Don't be a baby. You want to go out? You're big. You shouldn't be doing that. Like he's four. You know? And I, sometimes I say to my wife, you do it sometimes. Why can't he do it? I do it sometimes. Maybe I don't jump up and down and scream and shout, but I get upset. So why can't he do it? You know? And it's interesting because what I'll do is I'll go up to him. And I'll say, this is all I said. I know you're mad, Derek. And it's okay to be mad. It's okay to be mad. I said, we love you, and we're not going to let you have a toy, because right now that's not the right thing for you. But you're mad. And it's okay to be mad. You know what happens? It's interesting. Almost every time you do that, and you can put your arm to touch him and just say, I still love you, even though you're mad. He doesn't want it. Right? But you don't react to that. You stay away from reaction. And you just say, even though you're mad, Derek, Daddy loves you. You're very important to Daddy. Okay? And it's okay to be mad. It happens sometimes. Everybody gets mad. And so you, you know what happens? Here's what happens. He'll go, for about another 10 seconds, and then he'll stop. And then he'll stop. Now, why does he stop? Please what we just said. Why does he stop? What did I do? Instead of invalidating his emotion, what did I do? I validated his emotion. And it sounds stupid. You think that's not possible. Trust me, it works. And it works over and over. And you can't do it, don't do it manipulatively. Your heart has to be in it. You have to really care for the person. You have to really want them to feel better about themselves. Because if you do it manipulatively, you're going to say, you know, oh, it's okay to be mad. <laughs> like, it's, you don't care. You just, it's just, oh, well, somebody told me in the class to do this, so I'm just going to do it. You know, people can pick up the insincerity. They know that you don't really care. But if you really care, and you're trying to help a person, and you validate their emotions, you wouldn't believe the effect it can make. It makes a tremendous difference, okay? And I know because I've done it the wrong way, and I've occasionally done it the right way now. 
okay? There's some of the things that I've been able to learn. Um, and I'm 